Okay, let's talk about Article 220. Do we really have to? Yeah, we do. All right, branch circuit, feeder, service, load calculations. Now, before I get into Article 220, I want to mention that they restructured Article 220, and quite frankly, they, they did a lot of good work. So, if you're looking, you know, if you're, if, especially if you're an instructor, uh, an apprenticeship instructor, especially, you probably have a lot of Article 220 memorized. Uh, you're going to have to change things up because they kind of reorganize things, and where you know, what used to be 220.14i is now 220. Oh, what is it, 43 or something? I don't remember. But anyway, they they reconfigured a lot of Article 220, and and I I think you'll be happy with what they did, uh, but you will have to relearn a lot of the section numbers. Getting into the technical stuff, 220.5 calculations, garages must now be included in the load calculation for dwellings. Now that's the way I phrase this, but uh, you could argue that this change actually reduces the load calculation instead of increases it. Um, what it says, when we're calculating floor area, 225, uh, 220.5c, this used to be in 220.11, uh, floor area. Floor area is based on the outside dimensions of the building or area. Nothing new here. For dwelling units, open porches, and areas that are not adaptable for future habitable or occupiable space are not included. Okay, well, what it used to say is spaces that are not adaptable for future use are not included. You know, to me, that didn't include the garage. That did not include the attic. That did not include the crawl space or the, you know, the, if the basement didn't have, you know, enough ceiling height. Uh, but you could argue that all of those spaces were adaptable for future use, right? I mean, what's the future use of a, of a, of a crawl space that only has two feet of headroom? Well, storage. I mean, seriously, what if an inspector said, hey, man, that's adaptable for future storage space? you have to calculate the entire crawl space at 3 VA per square foot. I mean, I don't think that was ever the intent, but you could make that argument. You can't make it anymore, right? Because that is definitely adaptable for future storage space, but not adaptable as habitable or occupiable space. So I think this is a good change. Now, the other thing that this does is that it, in my opinion, it more clearly addresses the garage. So we, we don't include the porch, we don't include, you know, a deck or a balcony or something like that, but we do include the garage. Now, if your garage is an actual garage and that's all you're ever going to be doing with it, maybe 3 VA per square foot is excessive. I, I would argue that it's not. I mean, you're going to have a light in the garage. You're going to have convenience receptacles in the garage. So you got to take that into consideration. But the thing is, a garage yesterday, a man cave tomorrow. I mean, this is, a, this is at a place where I actually, this is an electrical contractor in Park City, Utah. This is actually at their house. And I stopped by their house and put on a little uh, <laughs> code class for him, actually. And it was, uh, it ended up being like we stacked like 15 guys in the room. And, uh, you know, they had a couple of, uh, of LED TVs, a full bar, a kitchen, the whole bottle action. You can see this, this is a garage. So that was finished as a kitchen. Yeah, we got to we got to calculate it, right? So people use their garages differently than they did in 1940 or 1970 or even 1990, you know. Real estate is at a premium. Square footage is at a premium. A lot of people don't want to waste that space in the garage by parking a car in it. If they can turn it into a kitchen or a mother-in-law apartment or whatever, a lot of people are going to do it and we have to accommodate that. So we have to we have to account for it, I should say. So there you go. That's the first change in Article 220, 220.5C floor area.